குட் ஈவினிங் ஆஸ் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு த ஹிந்து நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் பை சங்கர் ஐஏஎஸ் அகாடமி ஃபார் த டேட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆகஸ்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி த்ரீ டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் த லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் வி வில் பி கோயிங் த்ரூ டுடே நோ பிஃபோர் கெட்டிங் இன் டு த டிஸ்கஷன் ஐ ஹவ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டன் அனௌன்ஸ்மெண்ட் டு மேக் த மச் அவைட்டட் ப்ரீ ஸ்ட்ராமிங் டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் ஆஃப் சங்கர் ஐஏஎஸ் அகாடமி இஸ் அபவுட் டு ஸ்டார்ட் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு ஸ்டார்ட் ஃப்ரம் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபஸ்ட் செப்டம்பர் அண்ட் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டெஸ்ட் இஸ் ஆன் எயிட்டீன்த் செப்டம்பர் த அதர் டீடெயில்ஸ் ரிகார்டிங் த டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் ஆர் டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் யூ கேன் கோ த்ரூ இட் Now, without wasting time, let's start the discussion. Take a look at this article from yesterday's newspaper. The Chief Justice of India has recently released a handbook. This handbook provides guidance on how to avoid using harmful gender stereotypes, especially those about women. It identifies language that promotes such stereotype and suggests alternative words that are more neutral and more inclusive. So, in our discussion we will discuss what are the changes made by the supreme court and how it will help in tackling gender stereotypes okay before getting into the discussion i have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion for your reference you can go through it first you have to know that this handbook was titled as handbook on combating gender stereotypes what is the objective of this handbook The goal of this handbook is to encourage use of language that reflects a more respectful understanding of gender. It also provides equal rights for all individuals regardless of their gender. Ultimately, it aims to promote a gender sensitive language and tries to eliminate gender stereotyping. Here I have mentioned the word gender stereotyping. What is gender stereotyping and what are the negative impacts of gender stereotyping on society? See, gender stereotyping is the practice of assigning certain characteristics, words or behavior to a person based on their gender. These stereotypes can have a significant impact on how people are treated and perceived. For example, a common stereotype is that women are more emotional than men. This stereotype can lead to women being dismissed or ignored in the workplace or it can make it difficult for them to to get the same opportunities as men another common stereotype is that men are better at math and science than women this stereotype may discourage girls from pursuing careers in these fields gender based violence harassment and discrimination are often rooted in gender stereotypes these stereotypes are harmful because they lead to discrimination and prejudice and it can also lead to normalization of these harmful behaviors gender stereotypes often result in unequal pay and disparities in the workforce so it is important to challenge gender stereotypes in order to create a more inclusive and a more equitable society okay now let us come back to the handbook released by the supreme court we shall see what are the important changes made by the handbook the handbook made many changes regarding the use of certain words in the judiciary for example the handbook suggests using the phrase women who are engaged in sexual relations outside of marriage instead of the word adulteress it also suggests using words woman and wife without the prefixes chaste and obedient the handbook also provides more inclusive words such as partner instead of husband or wife it says that judges and legal practitioners should be aware of the way they describe people's role in the society For example instead of housewife use the term homemaker the handbook also advises to be mindful of the pronouns for example it suggest using the pronoun they instead of he or she some other examples like this are given in this picture you can go through it now why it is important for judges to use proper language the words used by judges are important because it has significant impact on how the law is interpreted and applied it can be used to uphold the values of the law and to promote equality and justice for example if a judge uses gendered language such as manpower or fireman it can reinforce the idea that certain roles and occupations are only suited for men similarly if a judge uses stereotypical language such as hysterical or emotional it can reinforce the idea that women are less capable and less rational than men this can have negative impact on women who are seeking to be taken seriously in the legal system 
the handbook argues that it is important for the judges to use gender neutral and inclusive language whenever possible let us see some of the significance of the handbook in combating gender stereotyping first is ensuring fairness and impartiality judges are supposed to be impartial arbiters of law the language they use should not reflect their own personal biases or opinions the second one is promoting equality and justice the language that judges used should not reinforce stereotypes or discrimination it should be inclusive and respectful of all people the third important significance is to uphold the rule of law stereotypical language can harm the application of the law and undermine the constitutional principles of equality and dignity since our legal system is based on the principle of equality the language used in courts should reflect this principle now we shall see some of the supreme court judgments that condemn gender stereotyping in the past the first one is the joseph shine west union of india case in this case the supreme court struck down the offense of adultery under section 497 of the indian penal code the court said that the law on adultery was a codified rule of patriarchy and it confined women to a narrow sphere in the behavior this is the first important judgment the second one is the state of jharkhand vs shailendra kumar roy case in this judgment the supreme court put a categorical ban on the two finger test the court said that the test was irrelevant to the determination of rape and it violated the dignity of the rape survivors then in the state of punjab vs gurmit singh case the court observed that the testimony of the survivor or victim of sexual violence is inherently credible the court said that the allegation should not be dismissed simply because of assumptions that women often falsely accuse men see these are some verdicts that are important in challenging the gender stereotypes and promoting gender equality now coming to the conclusion part see language is a vital tool for the law because language expresses the values and intentions of the law makers and the judges so it is important for the judges and the judiciary to be aware of the impacts of their words and they have to use their words very carefully this release of handbook is the first important step in creating gender neutral language in the indian judiciary as our chief justice rightly mentioned the language a judge uses reflects not only their interpretation of the law but their perception of the society also with this note let us conclude this discussion in this discussion we saw what is gender stereotyping the negative impacts of gender stereotyping in the society then we saw some changes made by the handbook and we saw the positive impacts these changes will bring to the judiciary and finally we saw some judgments given by the supreme court that reinforces gender equality okay with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article take a look at this article from yesterday's newspaper according to the article new studies on the wolf riot star has revealed that it might produce a magnetar after the supernova explosion this is about the article given here so in our article discussion today let us quickly go through what is a supernova and what is a magnetar okay a supernova is nothing but a large explosion that takes place at the end of a star's life cycle it is the largest explosion that can take place in the space as you know stars are celestial bodies that emit their own light a very good example for a star is the sun see these stars are formed in a cloud of gas and dust which is known as a nebula though the stars shine for many thousand or even millions of years the stars do not last for ever over the time changes occur in the star and the final stages of the star's life depends on the star's size here in the image you can see how the star develops into a supernova okay a supernova explosion happens when there is a change in the core of a star changes can occur in two different ways both resulting in a supernova see the first type of supernova happens in a binary star system binary stars are two stars that orbit the same point one of the stars which is a carbon oxygen white dwarf 
steals matter from its companion star eventually the white dwarf accumulates too much matter when a star has too much matter it explodes resulting in a supernova this is the first type the second type of supernova occurs when a single star comes to the end of its lifetime as the star runs out of nuclear fuel some of its mass flows into its core the core eventually becomes too heavy to withstand its own gravitational force the core collapses which results in the giant explosion of a supernova the interesting fact here is that our very own sun can develop into a supernova but remember the sun does not have enough mass to become a supernova so instead our sun might develop into a planetary supernova okay see during the supernova explosion the core collapses and crushes together every proton and electron into a neutron if the core of the collapsing star is between 1 and 3 times the mass of the sun then the newly formed neutrons can stop the collapse resulting in leaving behind a neutron star but if the core has mass more than that it will continue to collapse into a stellar mass black holes okay so depending on the size of the star the star might turn into a neutron star after a supernova explosion or if it is heavy enough it might turn into a black hole after the supernova explosion okay see the neutron stars can be observed in two forms one is the pulsar and the other is the magnetars these two classes of neutron stars are called non quiet neutron stars here pulsars are rapidly rotating neutron stars these neutron stars blast out pulses of radiation at regular intervals intervals may range from seconds to milliseconds they have very strong magnetic fields which pushes out jets of particles along the two magnetic poles these accelerated particles produce very powerful beams of light since the magnetic field is not aligned with the spin axis these beams of particle and light are dumped around as the star rotates okay now coming to magnetars see in a typical neutron star the magnetic field is trillion times the earth's magnetic field but in a magnetar the magnetic field is another 1000 times stronger than a neutron star so the magnetar is nothing but a neutron star with a extreme and powerful magnetic field also in all neutron stars the crust of the star is locked together with the magnetic field so any change in one will affect the other the crust of the neutron star is usually under immense strain and even a small movement of the crust will cause a giant explosion but since the crust and magnetic fields are tied together that explosion ripples through the magnetic field in a magnetar with its huge magnetic field any movement in the crust can cause the magnetar to release a vast amount of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation for example a magnetar called sgr 180620 had a burst where in 1/10th of a second it released more energy than our sun has emitted in the last 1 lakh years such powerful will be the explosion when it happens in a magnetar due to a movement in the crust okay understand this so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw what is a neutron star we saw what is a supernova and we also saw some points about pulsar and magnetars now with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article yesterday russia's roscosmos space agency said that the luna 25 spacecraft crashed into the moon after it spun into uncontrolled orbit luna 25 is a pilotless spacecraft and it was launched to land in the south pole area of the moon scientists all over the world show interest in this region because of the occurrence of water ice in the region it had been expected to land on august 21 but its contact was lost on august 19 itself this is due to its collision with the surface of the moon see only three governments have managed successful moon landings which include soviet union the united states and china 
after the disintegration of USSR, Lunar 25 is the first lunar mission of Russia since 1976. So, its failure actually underscores the decline of Russia's space power status. This is about the article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through some important points about Lunar 25. Lunar 25 is a robotic lunar lander mission developed by Russian space agency Roscosmos. It is part of the broader lunar globe program which aims to explore moon and conduct scientific experiments on its surface and the surrounding environment. The primary goal of Luna 25 is to conduct detailed studies of the moon's south pole region, mainly in the south pole at Kane Basin. To be specific, the mission aimed to study the composition of the polar regolith that is the rock and to study the plasma and the dust components of the lunar polar exosphere. Luna 25 was launched on 10th August 2023 using the Soyuz rocket. It was launched almost a month after the launch of Chandrayaan-3. However, it will cover the 3.84 lakh kilometer journey within days. This is mainly due to the lighter payload and more fuel storage. This aided the Russian mission to follow a more direct trajectory towards the moon. This saves time while reaching greater distance. The liftoff mass of Luna 25 is just 1750 kilograms compared to Chandrayaan's 3900 kg. While Chandrayaan 3 took a circuitous route to gain velocity with low fuel, Luna 25 took a direct trajectory towards the moon. Another reason Luna 25 can land a couple of days before India is because lunar dawn at its landing site will happen earlier. See, one lunar day is equal to 14 Earth days. Since the payloads are being powered by solar panels, landing happens at the beginning of the solar day. This ensures that the experiments get full 14 Earth days worth of sunlight. Apart from being lighter than the Indian mission, Luna 25 does not carry a rover. Chandrayaan 3 has a rover capable of moving around 500 meters. The Russian lander has 8 payloads. You can see that in the image given here and since it has a heating mechanism as well as a power source other than just the solar panels, the Russian mission was expected to work for a year. Whereas since the Indian mission lacked both, it was built to last only one lunar day or 14 Earth days. That is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw some important points about Luna 25 and we saw the difference between Luna 25 and Chandrayaan 3 mission. With this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Take a look at this news article. This article is about Generative AI. In this article, the author points out various issues surrounding Generative AI. In addition to this, he also suggests some solutions to tackle this issue. So, in our discussion, we will first understand what is Generative AI. Then we will understand the points discussed in the article. Before getting into the discussion, I have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion. You can go through it. Now, let's start with Generative AI. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can produce various types of contents like text, images, audios and so on. The contents that are produced by Generative AI are usually similar to human created content. In other words, the points produced by Generative AI are indistinguishable from human created content. This is because the GAI uses algorithms and models to generate new data based on the patterns that it had learned from existing data. This means that the generative AI does not replicate the existing content, rather it generates its own content based on the learned patterns. These factors makes the contents of generative AI similar to human created contents. One of the famous examples of generative AI is ChatGPT. The ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that can create human-like conversational dialogues. For example, if you ask ChatGPT to tell a story, it will tell you a story as a human would say. It can even help you with writing letters and essays. Yes, if you ask ChatGPT to provide love letter with some specialized message, it will provide you such personalized love letter and the letter would look like a human wrote it. So, ChatGPT is one of the apt examples of generative AI. 
I hope you understand the basic points about generative AI. Now moving forward, let us see the advantages of generative AI. Firstly, the generative AI will help to increase the efficiency and productivity in various industries. For example, in the manufacturing industry, the generative AI can be used to analyze defects in the production process. By doing this, the AI will help to reduce the wastage and time consumed, thereby increasing the productivity in the process. Apart from this, the AI will help in automation of repetitive and time consuming tasks in the industry. This in turn will increase the efficiency of the industry. This is the first advantage. Secondly, the generative AI has the potential to increase creativity and innovation. See, the generative AI can generate ideas, designs and solutions to various problems that would take humans a lot of time to find a solution. So, it can bring up creativity and innovation in many industries like arts, music and engineering. This in turn helps in the growth of these industries. Thirdly, the generative AI can provide access to new resources and data. The generative AI can generate new data such as simulation, prediction and forecast. For example, it can provide prediction on complex issues like climate change. This helps us understand the future impacts of climate change and allows us to make informed decisions. And the final advantage is personalization and customization. See, the generative AI can improve personalization and customization in various industries. For example, in the fashion industry, generative AI can be used to create custom fit clothing based on measurements of a respective person. Then, in the gaming industry, it can help us create unique and personalized gaming experience for each player. So, personalization and customization of things is one of the important advantages of generative AI. Having understood the advantages, now let us look into the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that generative AI can sometimes lead to the spread of false and misleading information. As we saw earlier, it can be able to create contents that are indistinguishable from humans. See, if this feature ends up in the hands of bad actors, it will create chaos in the society. For example, let us consider one particular person wants to damage the image of US President Joe Biden. So, with the help of generative AI, the person can make a video where it looks like that the US President gives hatred speech against a particular community in the US. See, this video here is created using generative AI. But the common people do not know how the video was created so it will end up spreading as false and misleading information which in turn brings chaos to the society this is the first disadvantage of generative ai the second disadvantage is regarding privacy concern as we saw earlier the generative ai creates content based on learned pattern from existing data this means the ai needs to collect the existing online data to generate its content this raises the concern See, there is no clear-cut policies or rules worldwide that regulates the collection, storage and use of data by the AI tools. So, there is a chance that privacy of a person or business can be violated by the generative AI tools. The third disadvantage is huge energy consumption. Since the generative AI models relies on advanced technology, it requires huge quantity of electricity to run. See, we need to produce high energy to run GAI models. For a country like India, which relies more on fossil fuel based energy production, the high energy demand will ultimately harm the environment. These are some of the disadvantages associated with generative AI. Now, what can be done to address these concerns? Firstly, the governments should devise strong regulation and guidelines to address the issue of privacy concern associated with the generative AI. Apart from this, the government should develop a robust data governance framework. On one hand, the framework will help ensure data privacy, security and compliance in the AI system and on the other hand, the framework will help address the concerns in the AI outputs. Secondly, the government should establish strong partnership with external AI experts, technology providers and relevant industry body to deal with the generative AI tools. See, collaboration with these partners will help the government 
to identify best practices and to share insights on addressing the common challenges related to generative AI. These are some of the measures that can be taken to address the concerns around generative AI. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw what is generative AI, we saw its advantages and we saw its disadvantages. And finally, we saw two steps that can be taken to address the concerns around generative AI. Now with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this article from yesterday's newspaper. This article deals with microplastics. So in our discussion today, we will see what are microplastics, why and where it is used. And finally, we will see how they can remove from the water bodies. Okay. Let us start by understanding what are microplastics. Microplastics are defined as synthetic solid particles with size ranging from 1 micrometer to 5 millimeter. And these particles are insoluble in water. The major sources of microplastic includes commercial product development and breaking down of larger plastics. See, microplastics are added to a range of products including cosmetics, personal care and cleaning products. They are relatively cheap ingredient and are used in these products for a variety of purpose. This includes as a abrasive or exfoliant, a bulking agent to prolong shelf life or for the controlled release of active ingredients. Previously, they were commonly used in products like exfoliating scrubs, toothpaste and lotions to provide texture. Also, they are used in industrial processes like fillers, additives or reinforcing agents in a variety of materials and products that includes paints, coatings, adhesive and construction material. These are the important areas and the applications of microplastic. Okay. See the issue with the microplastic is that they cannot be captured by the wastewater treatment system. So if they are washed down the drain after use, they can end up in our rivers and finally ending up in the oceans. Due to their composition, they persist in the environment and they have the ability to absorb toxins and potentially transfer them up the marine food chain. This affects the health of the marine ecosystem and ultimately these microplastics will end up in our plate through the seafoods. Now this is a major issue. So is there any steps that can be taken to address this issue? The article that we are discussing now deals with this only. See according to the article. The scientists at University of British Columbia Bioproducts Institute have found that if tannins are added to a layer of wood dust, it will create a filter that can trap all microplastic particles present in the water. Here tannin is nothing but a class of naturally occurring polyphenolic compounds found in various plants. Okay? These tannins are natural deterrents with astringent taste and binding properties. Now coming back, when scientists tested this combination of tannins and wood dust in mouse models, the process was proved to prevent the accumulation of microplastics in organs as well. So this can be commercialized and used to prevent the accumulation of microplastic in our oceans. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw what is microplastic, what are the source and the applications of microplastic and finally, we saw how these microplastic accumulation in our water bodies can be filtered out. Now with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Take a look at this news article. This is from yesterday's newspaper. See recently a large number of megalithic hat stones were found at Nahaparamba in Mallapuram district of Kerala. The stones were spotted from a single site during a recent excavation conducted by the Kerala State Archaeological Department. Note that hat stones are popularly called as Tupikkallu in Malayalam. They are hemispherical laterite stones that were used as lids on burial urns during the megalithic period. Archaeologists also found ashes in the urn that were covered with the hat stones. They noted that these findings were different from the previous findings. The archaeologist said that they usually get cremated bones from the urns, but this time they found ashes in the urns, which is a special finding. See the Tirunavaya town in Kerala and its neighborhoods have plenty of archaeological sites. So the local people are requesting the government to provide heritage status to the town. This is all about the news article. So in our discussion today, we will see some points about the Mehalithic culture. First of all, you have to know that the term Mehalith is a combination of two Greek words 
that is mega and lith here mega means large and lith means stones so basically megaliths means large stones in earlier times the megaliths served as a memorial structure and physical markers the megaliths were placed about the burial sites of the dead person to mark the place of burial this practice is what is termed as megalithic culture that is the culture of placing large stones on burial site is called megalithic culture see the megaliths are spread across the indian continent but most of them are found in the peninsular india they are mainly concentrated in the states of maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu kerala andhra pradesh and telangana now we will see the five major types of megaliths found in india the first one is the stone circles the stone circles refer to a large standing stone they are arranged in a circle or in the form of ellipse around the burial site the second one is dolmens dolmen is a type of megalith it is a rectangular box like chamber placed above the burial site it is constructed with five slabs the four slabs are placed vertically and the fifth slab is used as a capstone okay the third one is cist burial see here the cist is shaped like a coffin and it was used as a enclosure for dead bodies then the fourth one is pit burials the pit burials contain mortal remains of one or more human beings here the mortal remains of humans are buried with a variety of surface stones in a conical form and the final one is the menhirs menhirs refer to large single long stones that are placed upright above the burial site these are the five major types of megaliths that is found in the indian subcontinent with this information let us conclude this discussion now having come to the end of the news article discussion session let us take up the practice prelims questions we have four practice prelims questions today let us see them one by one let us take up the first question here four megalithic sites are given we have to arrange them from south to north direction now look at this map if we go south to north adichanallur comes first followed by brahmagiri then hire benagal and nagarjuna kunda so the correct answer here is option b 3412 moving on to the second question this question is based on our magnetar discussion they are asking us how magnetars differ from neutron stars so the correct answer here is option c magnetars are a type of neutron star with extremely powerful magnetic fields okay now moving on to the next question this question is based on our chandrayaan 3 mission discussion here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements given here are incorrect now let us take up the first statement chandrayaan 3 is india's second attempt to land a rover on the lunar surface this statement is correct moving on to the second statement the lander vikram and the rover pragyan of chandrayaan 3 remains same as the chandrayaan 2 mission this statement is also correct moving on to the third statement the chandrayaan 3 like chandrayaan 2 will take a rather long interesting route to the moon this statement is also correct since all the statements given here are correct and they are asking for the incorrect statements the correct answer here is option d none of the above now this is the quiz question for you today this question is about microplastics okay interested aspirants can write the answer for this question in the comment section the mains questions based on today's discussion are displayed here interested aspirants can write the answer for the questions in the comment section if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankara as academy's youtube channel thank you for listening